so really we are here to celebrate we're here to celebrate the glory that we are the simple natural being that just is the simple natural one that we are in truth when the attention relaxes and there is a resting in this moment here now a revelation is ever fresh it is an ever fresh revelation of simply being yourself just like this just as you are that there is nothing to do there is nothing to work for in the way the mind imagines in the way the mind loves to imagine that it has so much to work for but the simple truth is that you already are everything that is longed for and it is just to be here without any expectation without any anticipation to feel the aliveness of what has brought you here to this moment and the aliveness itself is the discovery the aliveness of this presence of your own presence is the discovery it is not the discovery of a thing of something of someone it is not the discovery of an evolution into a better object it is the disappearance of all objects into the wide open infinite eternal field that is the being that is the simplicity of being just simply being here just the resting of attention brings us to a felt sense of expanding beyond the regular consciousness that we live in when we are identified with the mind just the relaxation of attention into the felt sense of being here now brings us to the great discovery and revelation a sense of an expansion into a wider recognition of consciousness a broader field of consciousness than we can ever know when the mind is engaged in wanting and needing and having ideas and concepts it is the relaxation of mind consciousness where mind consciousness merges into the wide open field of pure consciousness that is always here that the discovery is that you in your naturalness in your simplicity in your glory in your divinity have always been here just like this underneath the play of the world and the mind's imaginings we could even say the mind's creation of a projected appearance of a unique movie every being has a completely different and unique view of what world is when we collapse the mind consciousness we collapse the picture of world into the vast open infinite eternal field of timeless being right here now in the simplicity of being we collapse mind 
into heart, someone into no one, all the ideas, beliefs, and concepts into natural intelligence, into the natural flow of consciousness, being consciously awake to itself and knowing itself and reveling in the glory of itself as utter freedom, as shining light, as simplicity, as beauty, as purity, emptiness, openness, a deep and extraordinary peace when mind rests into the pure open field of consciousness, we come to peace. We come to the peace that is always here. We come to the peace that has always been here. And we come to recognize a deep, silent, unmoving peace that is the essence nature that has never ever changed. We do not have to work towards something in the future because it's already here. This peace, this extraordinary peace is freedom from the mind consciousness and a deep remembering of your nature, your naturalness as peace. And so hear the stillness, hear the silence, hear the resting in the presence of being right now. It is just to come to the felt sense of being and to just be here in the felt sense of being, the presence that is felt is your own presence, but it is the presence, the one presence that is a vast open field of being. And so as these words come, there is nothing to learn. There are no instructions to follow. The pointings are immediate invitations to recognize what you already are. We are not inviting something to happen in a future that does not exist, only exists in the mind. We are coming underneath mind consciousness to meet the consciousness, the wide open field of consciousness that you are. Every word is an invitation to remember. Every word is arising out of the silence of the heart and is inviting a remembering, a relaxation, a resting, recognition of what you have always been, that you never have become what is imagined you have become. You have always been this essence nature. So we are speaking to not an achievement of the person. We're not speaking of any kind of new experience. We are dropping between everything to discover that underneath the whole play of the world that appears as my life, me and my life, there is a deep, silent, abiding peace. And it is still and unmoving, has never moved. It is eternal, abiding in itself. And the invitation is to remember this abidance in yourself, in the perfect peace that you are. To remember the glory, to remember the light, 
the beauty, the immaculate one that just is. And that everything that you have imagined yourself to be so utterly belongs to this one. How could it not? How could you not belong to the one? It is to turn the attention to the one without knowing what that one is even, without trying to imagine, without having any concepts. Just the simple turning the attention to oneness, to God, to love, to truth, to freedom, to ma. It does not matter what words we use. Words are only vehicles. But the words that resonate they bring us to an aliveness of the flavor that carries us into the deep remembering. Because we are unique. We are not separate or individual from the whole, but we have a uniqueness in our laws of nature. And when we can really tap into the uniqueness, the resonance of the uniqueness, it offers us all of the clues we need to remember what we belong to, to remember the oneness. So when we feel into what we are longing for, underneath the words, there is a resonance, a felt sense of longing. We could even say desire, if we like the word desire. Everyone has a desire, a longing. We imagine with the mind that it's for something. But if we take away the things that we imagine that it is for, and we just feel the energetic aliveness of longing, of desire, of yearning, of aching, of the pull, whatever words, when we just strip away all of the meaning and we let it sing, and pull and draw, it will bring us to the fulfillment that is already here. This is the glorious setup that if we stop longing for something, our longing carries us to what is truly longed for. Our longing itself carries us to presence, to now, to this moment to the vast, open, infinite field of being and the freedom that just is. The freedom that we are in truth. The deep, silent, unmoving peace that just is. And so as these words come, there's nothing to do, nothing really even to follow even though the mind will follow the words and it will glean some sense of understanding and it will enjoy that. It could be a little stirred by that. But deeper than that, in the aliveness of presence, consciousness itself is in the unseen, meeting itself, recognizing itself and coming to know itself in the deep, resonance, which is the aliveness of presence. And so as the words come, it is just to recognize where you feel the resonance of truth, where there is a sense of aligning, attuning with what the words are pointing to, a recognition. And if the mind is singing its song of separation, then just to watch that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> it is just not to give energy and attention to that. It is just to watch it and be the being that allows. To be the being that allows it all to be exactly as it is. Make not a problem of anything. Have no reaction to anything and you are free. This is the glory.
when we can truly not react to anything. It is because we come to the depth of stillness that is the true nature. And we come to recognize that stillness, silence, and abidance in our own naturalness. It is freedom and it makes not a problem of anything. It is only the mind that evaluates and analyzes. The being itself, it does not. It does not. The being simply is. There is nothing to know or understand. It is to let go of all knowledge, all acquired knowledge, everything that has been learned, just to let it all go. Because what we are in truth is, is a consciousness that is naturally intelligent. And we come to true intelligence. All that is required is this openness, to receive the knowing of yourself, the simplicity of being. And in the simplicity of being and the knowing of being, the recognition of the simple being, there is a a depth of recognition, which is where the being knows itself and this depth of recognition is pure intelligence. It is consciousness consciously awake and aware of itself. Where consciousness is awake and aware, consciously awake and aware of itself, there is an aliveness an aliveness in the knowing. And this aliveness is alive in the presence of being. When we can feel the aliveness, we are attuning to the finer frequency of a universal cosmic consciousness. We are are attuning to a finer frequency than the mind consciousness. And the habit that has been learned to attune to mind consciousness and all of the ideas of gathering more knowledge. When we attune to the resonance of recognition, the aliveness of presence, Consciousness itself is consciously awake and aware of itself. The aliveness is that consciousness. Could even say it's your consciousness, but it doesn't belong to someone. Your consciousness is consciousness that belongs to consciousness itself. So the aliveness of the presence is the consciousness alive and awake to itself as a field and the alive awake field it's it's alive and awake and it recognizes itself and it has a recognizable frequency a resonance and this recognition starts to bring more aliveness and the aliveness is the knowing And in the recognition of the aliveness, there starts to be an illumination, light, a lightness of being. We could say in the emptiness or the openness of being, there is an illumination 
a clarity, a clear vision. Because there is not a focus upon content and story in the spaciousness that is recognized to be alive just as an empty spaciousness. There is a shining light that is recognized and it is the radiance of heart. It is the brilliance of being. It is the shining light of pure knowing, self-knowledge illuminated in the recognition of itself. So do not be distracted by words here. Do not be distracted by words because a lot of different words come because words carry a resonance. And where we are speaking to an open field of consciousness, we use enough words and the words, the words that are needed for consciousness to hear itself because the words carry a code. They're like encoded with certain frequencies of consciousness and consciousness is intelligent, naturally and honestly intelligent. And it knows exactly what is needed to bring itself home to a deeper remembering of itself. So whatever this looks like right now, there is no one here that is speaking. There is just the resonance of being arising out of the silence. It appears as words, but it is not what is imagined. It is the resonance of consciousness, intelligently knowing exactly what is needed to attune the whole field of consciousness to a finer frequency and recognize the aliveness of the knowing of itself, all happening in the unseen. And yet you, what you are, is this intelligence. You are made of this. You are made of intelligent consciousness and you are resonating at a certain frequency. And as these words come, the consciousness that you are made of naturally starts to resonate at a finer frequency of remembering, starts to resonate at a finer frequency of remembering instead of resonating at that frequency of mind consciousness, which is more the habitual, more the conceptual. Consciousness itself, as these words come, starts to resonate in a deeper recognition and a finer frequency. So there is nothing to do. It is all happening in the field naturally or by itself. Where you recognize the, re the resonance and you can feel the aliveness, can start to feel a deeper sense of stillness, deeper sense of being, and a, a wilder recognition of the aliveness of the presence of being. So sometimes it can seem like stillness and silence and peace and the depths. How can that be alive? Well, it's so alive. It's so alive in the knowing of itself. Still, silent presence is the presence of being. It's the presence of now. Just being here now. And it is so awake and alert and alive. It is the alertness of awareness, the alertness of awareness, being aware of itself, consciously aware of itself. There's an alert awareness and there's a liveliness in the flow where the knowing of being is recognized. There's a lively flow. So do not be looking for these things with the mind that we are speaking of. Just attune to where there is a natural alignment, a natural recognition. We usually come first to the stillness 
and the silence of being, the felt sense of existence, of presence, of your own presence, before name and form and story, before the very first thought, just the felt sense of being. And just to come to this openness of being, we attune with the presence of the field. And here, attuned with the presence of the field, we are open, we are in surrender naturally, not a doing, just an openness where we could say maybe that the longing of the heart that brings us here is just open and here, ready, available for grace to flow in and carry the consciousness deeper into remembering. So the natural flow of consciousness is that it's magnetized to itself. It is naturally flowing to attune with itself, in a way evolve within itself and so to merge deeper and deeper into finer and finer frequencies. It is the natural intelligence that knows how. No one can do, no, there's nothing that we can do to affect this except to just be here. And as we are here, in the felt sense of presence, we start to recognize a deeper attunement with what we are not habitually attuned to. So we are not focusing upon the mind and the things and the thoughts and the doing. We are attuning to the finer frequency of being, the subtlety of perception, that brings us to be aware here, now. So as we come to this felt sense of being, we can also call this the sense of I am, I am, I am, just being, just being, just being. Simple existence, the felt sense of being here, of presence, a live presence. What we can notice first is generally that there is a capacity to witness the moving changing, can witness thoughts that come and go, can witness the moving changing field of objects and sense perception. Essentially, it's all thought really, but it seems to be other things, <laughs> but essentially, it's all thought, it's all the moving changing, sense perception, environment, body sensations. The witnessing awareness is aware of everything that's moving and changing. And this witnessing awareness, this witnessing consciousness is the presence consciousness that is like the outermost layer. It's like an outer layer in a way of pure awareness, it's witnessing, and it's focused upon the moving changing. And as we are here, resting in the presence and witnessing, just watching the moving changing, instead of identifying in the habitual way, and just thinking along, right, monkey mind, just thinking along, chitty chatty, chitty chatty, in the internal chatter of the mind, we're suddenly just here in the felt sense of being, just watching the mind, watching thoughts come and go, watching the sense perception, evaluating, analyzing, well, the mind evaluating what the sense perception is picking up. But the pure awareness is completely aware of it all, but it's not dividing it through sense perception, and it's not dividing through a mental evaluation. It's not dividing the moment through 
a mental analysis, very quick and very instinctual. Do I like this? Do I not like it? Is this my preference? What does this mean for me? Right? The mind is constantly, very quickly analyzing the moment. So nothing matters. Nothing at all matters. Every single thought that comes forward is about you and your inner world because there's nothing else out here except your, your inner world and, and the evaluation. So let's not spend any time projecting and thinking about apparent others. Let's just really focus upon what is being witnessed, what we are aware of, and really just focus on being aware. And when we just focus on being aware and we don't fragment through the mental activity, analyzing and evaluating the moment, we come to a depth of presence where the projections are being pulled in. We're bringing in the projections of our own mind. We're bringing in the projections of the world that we create moments in the moment, right? We bring it all in and we're just here. And the depth of presence gets more alive because we're not focused on out there and this and that and the other and this one and that one and who did this and who said what. And we're just not focused upon that because that's the whole mental landscape. We pull in all the projections and we're just here. And we're just aware if there's energy in the field, we're just aware of sensation, aliveness, moving, changing. We distill it down to just simply be aware of our own inner landscape without giving any of it meaning. We pull all the projections in and just in this moment, we're just aware we can hone it right the way down to just be aware of your own nervous system, which is the aliveness and the sensation. We can hone it right down. And what we're really aware of is the nervous system, which is our own consciousness. So we're consciously aware of our own patternings of consciousness that are moving and changing. And as we focus even more as the witness, we're just aware of the moving, changing, but we're focusing on feeling the sensation and just being with the inner landscape and the aliveness. And we start to distill even more all of the projections into just the aliveness of this moment. And the world disappears and there's only now, and you're still here, but you're not the projected character, avatar that you have imagined yourself to be. What you are is this moment. What you are is all of this that's here, but there's no fragmentation. There's no division. There's just consciousness. And even if it feels to be that there's some discordance in the field, you know that somehow this belongs to you. There's no need to analyze it, make, make a meaning of it, make a problem of it. There's just a recognition that the aliveness of this moment is somehow all you, just yourself, just the being, just being here. And the felt sense of simply being that is watching and naturally aware, it's aware of, but the more you're aware of so acutely, what you're aware of distills to be the very same felt sense of just being. So in a way, the discordance dissolves through, a lot, let's say it dissolves through sensation into aliveness, to being consciousness, to just being just this moment, just as it is. Because the mind consciousness is what merges and dissolves into the deeper felt sense of being. 
And the felt sense of being is the being yourself, dissolving into a naturalness, a deep relaxation into this moment where you're just here, just like this. There's not even a need to say, oh, but what about, but what about? It's just this. Nothing needs to be known with the mind. It's a habit of the mind to want to know and control. And of course, it will start to churn again as soon as identification with a thought happens. But let's enjoy this moment. Let's enjoy this moment free. And so the recognition can deepen and there can be just a deep, nourishing, resting in the transcendent samadhi absorbed in the being, just in the stillness of simply being yourself, just in the naturalness of being yourself, being free and open, empty of content and full of yourself, full of just the blissful, contented, being. We do not need to hang on to anything or learn anything or understand anything. The words, they just keep coming. <laughs> they just keep coming and they just keep pointing. And they're pointing in order to pull all of the threads into a one-pointedness that brings this depth of remembering for all beings into the one being that we gather. We gather where we are the same, that we gather in the wide open heart of being where there is just one and we discover here the oneness, here the innocence, here the beauty, here the immaculate simple being. And there is no need to understand because the freedom is just this here now. The presence of being is just this here now, just like this. And here the glory shining, here the glory shining. So consciousness is consciously aware of itself and this outer layer of the witnessing presence, it witnesses the moving changing. And as it witnesses the moving changing, it starts to realize that the witnessing presence, that it's independent of the moving changing, that it's not affected or disturbed by the moving changing, that it's completely independent, that you awareness are completely independent of the moving changing. And as you recognize your independence from the moving changing, there's an ability to be more aware of the moving changing. And here we distill through what feels like stress or emotion or story just to sensation and then to aliveness, and then this merging into the beingness. And so this witnessing, as the witnessing recognizes its independence, it naturally starts to inquire within its own sense of being, well, what then am I in this amnes of being independent what is this I? Because this I is not the one that I thought I was, right? Notice, not the one I thought I was. No, no, no. So what then is I? What is I? Because I, as a felt sense of being, is still here. So in a way, the being says to itself deep in the realms of innermost being, in the silence, and without words, it says, well, then what am I? I am still here, even though I'm watching that one I thought I was, 
I know I am not that character, that avatar. I know I am independent from the moving change, the moving changing. I'm independent and free of the moving changing. So the deep innermost being says, then what is I? What is this I that I have so freely used to describe a mind and a body? The I itself says, then what am I? Who am I? It's the innermost being itself that deeply inquires naturally into itself, consciously, the consciousness itself consciously inquires in a very simplistic way and in, a, a, in the instant of now, it inquires and discovers, I am myself, I am this being, I am not a thing, I am not a person, I am not what I thought I was, I am just this presence of being. I am this silence, this simple being, just like this. This is what I am. And this all happens instantaneously, spontaneously in the innermost being. We could say this outer layer of witnessing presence drops into the innermost, innermost awareness of being and recognizes itself deep within the being. So what is happening in this is a natural intelligence is recognizing itself consciously and the finer frequency is attuning with itself and resonating at a finer frequency and attuning to itself and recognizing itself as a finer vibration. And as it recognizes itself, you recognize yourself as a finer vibration, you can feel that that frequency is more widespread. It's so fine that it's resonating everywhere in the whole field. It's infinite and unbounded. It's not bound by the limitations of mind consciousness. You are not bound by the limitations of mind consciousness and concepts and beliefs and ideas and learned knowledge. You're not bound by anything because you're this fine intelligence that is everywhere and just resonating everywhere, fine and free, singing the silent song of pure knowing, wide open heart, silent, still, deeply, deeply, unmovingly peaceful, and yet wildly alive in the resonant knowing of your true nature. And this alive knowing of true nature, naturalness, essence nature, it shines in the knowing of itself. And this is natural illumination. It's the illumination of the pure light, the light of knowing. We could call it the wisdom light. The wisdom light is shining as the heart, as the self, as the natural essence of being. What you are before you imagined yourself to be someone, what you have always been, who you have always been before the story of birth and who you are here is the eternal one that can never be birthed and can never die. You are the eternal one, timeless being before the human birth. And in the knowing of this, the cycle of life and death ends. The cycle of karma ends. The mechanism of desiring ends. You are free in the knowing of yourself because you're not the one with desires. You're not the one that you thought you were that is cycling around in a play of karma trying to get somewhere. You realize here now 
there is nowhere to get to because this being that you are is everything. It's freedom. It's eternal peace. It's unbounded, eternal life. You are immortal, invincible, immeasurable in your true nature. The absolute abidance in God is here. God did not have one son that he gave to the world. God put forward Christ consciousness so that every being could know that there is only one consciousness and it is Christ consciousness. It is pure, holy consciousness. It is pure divine consciousness. Let us give up the stories of separation, the stories that divide. Let us give up all beliefs that are interpretations of the pure truth. You are the Christ. You are the Buddha. You are Shiva. You are the mother, right? Let us give up everything that divides all of the ideas that divide us from utter wholeness. And let us come in this moment to the undivided, pure truth. You are the truth. You are the undivided wholeness. And in this moment, the knowing is here. The knowing is here. Of course, we have been conditioned to follow beliefs and ideas and ways of the world. We have been conditioned to believe and imagine that we need to fit in. So what we are speaking here is a little outside of convention because we're not about fitting into the world. The world is the projection of the mind. When we come before mind, we are free of projection and we're in the freedom of who we are in truth. The incredible glory is that here we actually rest in true humanness. We can only truly come to human being when we are free of human condition, when we are free of all of the ideas of my world that I have created. We actually in freedom our true human being, true human. And we live the humanness of being, which is the humanness of being is the, it's the expression of the divine through these forms in this realm. But it's a divine expression. Let us let go of limiting ideas that we are not one with God. It's so important that we see through all of the ideas of limitation. We can often feel the resonance in limited, limited ideas, but we can get bound imagining that we have to conform and stay restricted as a seeker, as a student, as a disciple, right? But no, 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 we're here to rest in the utter oneness and come to an autonomy of knowing in our direct experience where we're not creating more experiences and we're not on a self-improvement plan. We're actually freeing ourselves completely from the entanglement in the collective and coming to a depth of freedom where we can actually be a light on the surface of life. And we can actually, through just our lived experience, shine and be the change. How are we the change? We are the change by being the change. We're being the change by living this truth, abiding in the glory of God as our own nature, right? Not as a concept not as a story that we are hoping to attain to, but we're bound in stories of sin and unworthiness, right? This is not the whole truth. It's a partial truth. 
Let us free ourselves in our own direct experience of partial truths and come to the knowing of wholeness through being the wholeness, where we don't need anyone in the world to confirm who and what we are, because our lived, we are the living answer, we are the living knowing. And then the lived experience in the moment is of freedom, is of living as human being, but not being bound, living fully, freely, joyfully in the deep abiding peace and glory of true nature. In a way, true life is lived in this glory, the flow of life itself, the aliveness of life itself just flowing. Not my life, not your, not, not your life, not the story of many, many lives. And yet at the same time in this glory, the incredible profundity in the oneness of the beauty of diversity is fully appreciated because you are tasting yourself in the great glory, the one, the one is knowing itself in the great glory. God dancing in God, love loving love, the self knowing itself and shining in and as itself. Life is simplicity. Life is purity. Life is divinity. And the knowing of this is right here now. So the mind can sneak in and say, well, that isn't my full lived experience right now. Well, that's okay. But if we don't speak of this, you're not going to be pulled to it, right? We have to speak of the whole truth so that we are inviting you to open to what you already are, but maybe not resonating in. We're opening up the, the deeper resonance, the finer frequencies of remembering. So as these words come, that's why you start to resonate in a deeper remembering. Like the innermost being starts saying, yes, yes, yes. And it's not someone saying, oh, yes, I am God. In a way, the mind will usually come in and say, oh, my goodness, I cannot be worthy of that. And all of those concepts and ideas that want to hold a condition of not worthy, not lovable, not ready, not possible will come in. And that's OK. Everything lets go in divine timing. But as we speak of it, what's happening in consciousness is that consciousness is naturally refining itself, purifying itself, and carrying itself into finer frequencies by transmuting the discordant. And as the discordance is transmuted, the holding patterns that keep us in separation are dissolving. The laws of nature that hold us bound are refining into finer laws of nature. We're remembering our fineness. We're remembering and letting go of, let's say, denser patternings and moving in finer, freer patternings of consciousness. So we start to notice differences in the lived experience. We start to feel lighter and brighter and happier and simpler, and things start to fall away that no longer serve. And it doesn't matter. We're not holding on and nostalgic, right? But at the same time, we have a humanness that can feel tender and profound beauty in like a depth of sensitivity and compassion for the fragility and profundity of this lived experience, the poignancy, let's say the excruciating beauty of it. We can open to it without being protected from it 
with our conditions and all of our ideas and ways of controlling, we can open more fully to the whole spectrum of the human life in human beingness. We're not afraid, we're fearless. And this is where life is truly starting to live itself. So all of this is being spoken because all of this in this field of consciousness, there is a readiness to hear this. At the same time, we have unique laws of nature and we are unique flowers that are blossoming into our shining, illuminated remembering of the glorious divine true nature, the oneness with God, that we share the same essence with God, with the divinity, with Ma. We share the same essence and we are being invited to open to remember that. And where we remember it, there is bliss, there is light, there is simplicity, and there is deep, deep nectarine nourishment, deep nectarine nourishment in the bliss, in the light of remembering true nature. And here, what starts to really come forward can be more of the joy and delight, the love, because there's more openness. There's less guarding, less protection. In a way, those protective patterns of consciousness start to dissolve and merge. And there's an openness to being the glory. Being the glory. So the light shines the way. And the light recognizes the way. And so the light follows the way deeper into the light because the light remembers itself as light. No one gives us anything. No one brings us to this. In the deep resonant recognition, we come to this as we mature and ripen and open and recognize the deeper resonance of our own essence nature. We just come alive. We just come alive in the shining knowing of our own nature, of our essence nature. We come alive. We just come alive in our own presence. We just come alive in a deeper truth. And here, surrender is natural because life surrenders into itself. It does not hold on to anything. It's freely surrendering into itself and into itself in this moment, this moment here now, this moment here now. Wherever you are is where awareness is. Where awareness is and where you can feel the resonance of truth. Where awareness recognizes awareness is here is where there is the beingness, the being recognizing itself. The being is pure awareness. There is a resonance and you might start to feel like a finer, more expanded frequency. You might feel more open. The felt sense of yourself is everywhere, is openness, emptiness. Nothing is really changing. It is that the, the limitations are dissolving and you're naturally 
directly experiencing more of your true essence nature. As mind dissolves, you come to recognize more of yourself. You can feel so clearly the felt sense that you are here, but you are not the story. You're not the thoughts. You're not the person. And so you're not the life that you think is my life. Your life itself, let's say as life itself, you're the aliveness in life. You're animating the story. You're animating the unique images of life. You're creating the appearance. You're creating the possibility of the human experience and the multi-sensory dynamic experience of an individual life. You're the aliveness that's animating the form. You're giving life to the, to the body mechanism, but you're not the body. You're not the mind. You're the aliveness that's animating and giving life. And when the life of the, of the let's say, when the, when the animated flow of life recognizes within its own intelligence that it has fulfilled what is needed in this realm, it naturally creates the situation to withdraw from the flesh, like a graduation from flesh. It, it graduates and withdraws, but life itself lives on. Life itself lives on. And that life has never ever been dulled or tainted or diminished in any way. That life, you are that life, the eternal one that is always this deep, silent peace, divine, whole, light, resonating at finer, and finer frequencies of remembering. And as you recognize these finer frequencies, you are like a resonating antenna and a transmitter. <laughs> and your resonance uplifts the whole, the collective consciousness. Your resonance transmutes the whole, the collective. But you don't need to go into and touch the collective, you just keep resonating at the fine frequency of your own knowing. You're resonating at the fine frequency of your own illumined knowing of yourself. And naturally, the one consciousness is shifting and opening and refining within itself. So this is why our greatest service is to awaken to true nature and live this truth in deep abidance, self-abidance. This is our greatest service. This is our duty. It's to know this truth, live this truth, and recognize the great glory that we are right now. And so wherever you feel the resonance, it's just to attune to the deepest possibility where you can feel the resonance of the yes, of an aliveness, of recognition. Because every being has some degree of recognition because you are made of this. You are made of this intelligence, this natural intelligence. And this is the invitation to resonate finer, deeper, richer, fuller. So where we speak of the longing or the desire on the surface of life, the longing brings us to here, to wholeness, to fulfillment, even a glimpse, a taste of fulfillment, a taste of bliss. 
it carries us deeper. It nourishes us to go deeper and deeper into the finer and finer frequencies where the conditioning and the protections that keep us in separation dissolve and we come to a naturalness, a natural restoration of the connection with being is what is in process. And once the connection is remembered, it roots and anchors itself in recognition, recognizing. And what you are is consciousness, recognizing in the field of intelligence, the true essence nature. You are the living field of intelligence. This is the Ved, the living Ved. <laughs> an incredible field of reverberating, intelligent flows of life, of truth, of glory. And we are made of this. We are not what the mind imagines us to be. And it does not matter whether this makes any sense to the mind. It cannot be understood with the mind. But in the unseen, the resonance is being recognized and shifting and refinement is happening beyond any kind of understanding or measure. And so we just fall into the river that is flowing, that is life, that is grace, in surrender, in devotion, in gratitude, whatever arises in joy, in awe, in wonder, whatever arises, we just fall in, we fall in to a deeper remembering of the true one, the true one, where we are the same, the one being that we share, that we don't only share it seemingly with each other, we share it with God, we share it with Ma, we share it with divine wholeness, and we are in the process of remembering the extraordinary in the ordinary. <laughs> Living this ordinary life in the most extraordinary freedom. So just right now to feel the stillness, the presence, the aliveness of the presence. You can perhaps feel it resonating more enlivened as your nervous system, but the felt sense of it being enlivened is everywhere. The felt sense really of what your nervous system in is everywhere. It's not only in the body. And yet, in a way, the body's true function is as an antenna. It's the, what the body is, is resonating intelligent light. So in a way, the body is felt to be resonating. The nervous system is felt to be resonating with the stillness, with the silence, with the being, but the felt sense of the resonance is everywhere, everywhere. There's no edges or boundaries. Just to feel the fine resonance of being. Hmm. The depth of stillness, the silent stop is where the mind consciousness 
stops because it merges into universal cosmic consciousness. And so there are no more thought waves. The thought waves are resting into the finer enlivened field. And then the finer enlivened field is where the consciousness consciously recognizes itself as the field, wide open, aware of itself, boundless, everywhere, alive. Freedom is who you are. Right here now, the recognition of this freedom that you are in truth. Remember the stillness, remember the silence, remember the deep peace of being yourself before the imaginings of the mind. Remember that you have always been yourself vast, infinite, eternal freedom, simply being right here now. Mm-hmm. 